Hello, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here. And uh, I start showing some of the images of our festival, the Boom, that is held in Portugal since 97. And actually, we say that we do a temporary city with a festival inside for a week. This place um, is inland Portugal, around three hours from Lisbon. And uh, we went there for the first time in 2002. Nowadays, the festival has an economic impact of around 56 million euros in Portugal. Uh, most of the suppliers, which are around 200 suppliers, 90% of them are Portuguese. And through what we have been doing in Boom, we have been not only making a festival that transforms people from all over the world, but can also transform the community around us. Our festival has 40,000 people from 175 countries, which for many people is a paradox. How can something be sustainable with so much travel? But we say that uh, we should not uh, only obey to the mainstream approach of look at climate change and sustainability only through the greenhouse effect, because actually that's the only unit of measure that the system has. The human behavior, the water footprint, the amount of suppliers that we can involve, they are another one. So the festivals, actually, we are looking at a festival. And festivals, for many people, is about party. It's about fun. It's about hands up in the air, bands. People love to be in a festival. But festivals, in many ways, they have been supporting uh, something higher than before. And for us, festivals serve various purposes. And this is why for us it's very important to look at festivals as something that can extrapolate for society. So the first thing is that festivals are microcosms of cities. If you see today, around 55% of the world population lives in cities. And by 2050, 70% of the people will be in a natural setting. So we have to rethink in cities has been very common to look at what has been going on in New Delhi, the traffic jams that we all have in cities, but actually festivals can really look at urbanism on a different approach. And sustainability, food supply, social justice are just small parts that we can test in festivals. The other one is that, as we can see through the COVID, uh, creativity is at the forefront of innovation for economy, but also is at the forefront of the way we reframe the conventional approach. With COVID, many of the systems and the models and the approaches that mainstream society gave us, they fall apart. And if we don't have a creative approach, then we will go apart with that. And we can see that in society with the epidemics of mental health. So creativity in festivals are just not a way to system thinking, problem solving, and much more. Festivals without creativity are just a, bun a bunch of gigs lined up. And thirdly, if we look at the Maslow pyramid of human needs, in a festival, we deal with our basic needs. We look at water, food, shelter, sanitation, but also social belonging, because we are social beings. And altogether, we create culture, but we are also exposed to culture, which is something that we've been talking around here. Um, we can have a festival with great lineups, but if we have a festival that don't deliver proper shelter, proper food and proper sanitation and cleanliness, maybe that festival is going to be ruined. And this is something common. I think everyone here, maybe that was in a festival, have been experienced what is the nightmare when we have a festival with when the toilets are totally um, inappropriate. <laughs> so um, let's just rewind here a bit. So we started this uh, approach of festivals in a beautiful place, which is this one. And uh, this is the Boomland. This is uh, inland Portugal, as I said, and back in 2010, we went to this land. In 2002, we were across the lake because we had an organization from Lisbon and other folks from Porto, and we decided in 2000 to 2002 to move inland. And a lot of people were saying, why the hell do you go inland? The system is here in Lisbon and Porto. Why are you moving in? So we relocated everything there. We relocated our company, we spent a lot of time there, and we created something that was for us very important, which is, for us, a festival needs to support human transformation and land regeneration. And if we don't have a land, we are just making some superficial approach into culture. So we went there, at the, when this photo was there, there was nothing there. There was no water, current water, there was no sanitation, it was just a beautiful landscape. And we had around six months <laughs> 
to build infrastructure to hold, at that time, 20,000 people. So, this place is inland Portugal. It's a beautiful place. This is the closest village with 80 people. Uh, the youngest person on this village is 65 years old. And uh, the infrastructure of this place is only designed for 10,000 people. So suddenly we arrived in 20,000, and now we are 40,000. Imagine how can the whole region have a new approach into water, sanitation, etc. We are a major stress of that. But we are also, on another way, a major improvement of the social sphere. Because in this region, it's an elderly, uh, elderly population, it's very beautiful, the landscape, but it's also one of the hopeless sides of Portugal, because it's highly dependent on state, lots of immigration, critical mass lost, and a lot of people are moving out. As you can see here, there is around 14% people lost from the two polls, survey polls, 2009 and 2020. The only increase that we see now, this is the Portuguese population, the only increase now that you see into this region as is actually the foreigners that are starting to work at the festival and they are fixating there. So we are watching a steady increase of the latest uh, demographic poll due to the fact that the boom is there. But as I said before, we have to look at solutions. How could we turn that part, that other landscape that I showed before, into something that can hold a festival? And so we were looking at different technologies. One of the technologies that we are using and that we started to put a lens and to create a framework is permaculture. Permaculture, for someone that knows, is based on three, uh, an ethics, care for the people, care for the earth, fair share. And there's a huge a set of permaculture principles that are actually the, the network and the framework that can uh, imply as to do a festival. So, for instance, nowadays we have a water treatment station that can treat up to uh, 7 million liters of water, which is all the water that we produce and consume at the festival. It comes from the public grid. And through some permaculture techniques, all that water now is, can be reintroduced to the land regeneration and reforestation. At the same time, all those images that you saw before, these uh, videos, they are also, also done with several principles, especially like working with the landscape and never against it. This is why we can preserve and regenerate everything that we are doing. For us, it's not only about bringing people to have fun, it's really, as I said before, about land regeneration. And these are the design principles that we obey. It's a bit like in our lives, when we have some ups and downs, sometimes we have to zoom out and look at the principles at our core to see where is our roots, and permaculture gives our roots. This is the most important for us, is always everything we do, for instance, a garden is based on preserve and in us biodiversity. So we introduce local species that are resilient to water. In Portugal, this year, again, in the winter time, 90% of the country was on drought. Two years ago, 99% of the country was on extreme drought. So everything that we do, it has to be working with nature and never against. And the, the festival has to mirror this when we are designing it. In this picture, you can see some uh, small garden that we did. This is water that we introduced. And there is several species that are here. And now this was a, a land that was completely desert. And now you can see the frogs overnight to sing. So it's very possible to do this kind of regeneration works when we have proper principles. So. Now, the cultural side, the social side. It's been really nice to see all the, the presentations here. Community is really there, very present. One of the things that we, that we have been doing also is to present the local community, but also the international festival community, with knowledge that comes from far, with techniques, in this case, bioconstruction, that came from Bali, Indonesia. And through that, we were introducing in 2006, for the first time on a festival of this scale, bioconstruction using bamboo. This bamboo is still being used today. So this is, again, reframing the way that we look at materials. What is sustainability? If we are still using bamboo that we brought from Indonesia, we are still reusing today, and we brought a bunch of uh, Balinese architects and artisans, and they created a major impact in the festival industry that, of course, has the sensitivity to ease, and also 
a major impact in the local population. So, one of the things that also is most, uh, uh, we are mostly happy is that we did not only change ourselves, our organization, the people that visit also the festival, but the whole Idanyanova region. Because that we have almost 90% of the suppliers, Portuguese and local, Idanyanova became the first bioregion of Portugal. And at the same time, because of the Boom Festival, they applied to become the first city of music in Portugal. This was because the festival was there. And because of Boom started a, a whole creative ecosystem, another small festival started to come. Musicians are there. Now there is an orchestra living there that have one of the best maestros, Martin Sousa Tavares, in Portugal, and they are applying to keep on bringing mu more musicians following the example that we are doing there. So the producers and the promoters and everything created an ecosystem in this region where I showed before was losing people. But through creativity, we are reframing completely the way of being inland. It's not about a rural area. It can be rural, it can be creative, it can be innovative, and we can regenerate not only the land, but also we can regenerate the whole situation socially. And it's about socially that I want to introduce the next slide, which is, many times we are talking about sustainability on the outside, but what about us, humans? Our, ourselves, our teams, our organizations. Many times with our fast pace of festival production, we kind of lose it and we get burnout and we get stressed and sometimes we are too much giving outwards and not feeding inwards. So it's very important that we also have a sustainable framework to be sustainable inside ourselves and our core group. So we use a technology, a social technology that we imported from Australia called Dragon Dreaming. Dragon Dreaming has these four quadrants. It is an updated version of the wisdom of the Western uh, Australia Aboriginals and is based on three principles. Preservation of the earth, community building and personal growth. And so these four principles, which is the dreaming, the planning, the doing and the celebrating, are something that we always need to have in a team. But it's also something that we should have inside us every time we go into a project, every time you go into something. So, for instance, most of us in the cultural sector with COVID, we maintained ourselves in the dreaming and planning. We were not doing and we were not celebrating. And the celebrating here is not about going into party with friends and dinner out and drink and whatever. Celebrating is really about feedbacking and sharing and acknowledging and taking the awareness of the amazing things the low sides, what we need to improve, that we did all together, always on a social approach. So, actually now, in this event, we are finally on the doing, on the third quadrant, which, congratulations for the whole team to make it happen. Um, but I think we all know how much only staying on the dreaming and the planning has been freaking out most of us in the cultural sector, because we were not going downwards in the doing, and also to finalize the cycle with the celebrating. And what you see below are some of our production uh, tools that we apply on every part of the process. So we start with strategy meetings, mood boards, and then we create on the planning organizational charts, timeline spark sheets, I mean, general meetings, protocols. This is quite common for everyone in the, the creative side. But then we start on the doing. We have to go on site, we have to build. And during the event, we have the event logs so that we know everything that is happening. And so with all of this, in the end, we have the celebrating with financial reports that is very important for us to be sustainable and the inventory so that we can reuse materials, but also some performance evaluation. And this is not about the standardized performance evaluation. It's we have a, a, a way of doing peer coaching and it's through peer coaching that we, we improve the quality of the team. So rep, let's try to wrap it up from permaculture design to go into the inland Portugal and to create an impact on the surrounding community and to bring people from all over the world and to try to change not only ourselves but also to regenerate the land. It's quite important that we make this question. Why and how sustainability, ethics and festivals can have an impact for system change? Because festivals are a common thread in human history. 
they were celebrating harvests, marked victories, etc. So for us, the answer is that by showing human-centered, eco-aware technologies, we can transform ourselves, our organization, our audiences, and our communities around us. If it's something that is being done from your art, with knowledgeable people that want to take risks, this is something that is achievable by everyone. We could do it, and we believe you can all do it here and elsewhere. Thank you.